Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. This is Krish. Uh, uh, in this video, I want to talk about Heroku Dinos. I had made a video last week where I talked about Heroku standard 1X and 2X Dinos a little bit. I want to pick up from where I left off, or at least where I think I left off. Um, so we have we upgraded our Dinos over the weekend. Uh, I also implemented caching. There's another video that I uh, where I've discussed caching to some extent. Uh, so between an upgraded dyno and caching, but primarily caching, uh, you will see uh, an even improved performance when you use the product. Uh, most, if not all, the pages, including the, the very uh, you know data-intensive charts, should take less than 200 to 300 milliseconds. At least that's the average I've seen so far. And the charts, in particular, are pretty complex because they are very cross-cutting, right? They they touch a number of collections. Uh, in the MongoDB, uh, so I'm uh, rather pleased that it, uh, it takes only uh, 300 milliseconds or much lesser. And to be honest, I actually have not implemented used caching uh, in charts, and even without caching, it actually performs rather well. So maybe uh, the aggregate queries uh, uh, I ended up writing maybe they aren't that bad after all, uh, because I had actually used Mongoid initially, uh, and then I realized for charts. And for aggregation, Mongoid is going to be very expensive. So I just, even before I started uh, making progress with Mongoid, uh, just in the context of uh, chats, I just switched gears to writing aggregates. So there's a number of those uh, Mongo aggregate queries and they are performing quite well. But out, outside of that, uh, we have, we have, uh, we've upgraded our uh, Mongo, sorry, Heroku Dinos. Uh, so given the combination of these things, uh, the pages should be a whole lot faster now, even faster than uh, they were before. Uh, and they're only going to get faster and faster as we make improvements. Uh, so um, any experience you have today, uh, it's going to get better. <laughs> so please sign up if you haven't already done so. Uh, if you have, uh, hopefully you enjoy using the product. Okay, now that's two minutes already. I haven't, haven't even gotten into the dyno discussion. Uh, so with Heroku Dinos, uh, we upgraded from Her Heroku 1X to 2X uh, because the, the 1X is, has like 512 uh, gigs of, uh, sorry, 512 gigs, I hope, uh, 512 megs of memory. Uh, the uh, 2X has twice that amount, right? So it's got a gig. Uh, and, uh, you know, that, that little, given the memory footprint is just the same across those, we get more memory uh, for almost the same price. We pay a bit more, uh, but at the end of the day, we get over 60% more uh, memory. Uh, and with all the sods that happen in the system, it, it, it's going to come in quite handy. And I'm, I can already see that it is. Um, so the next two levels, I mean, once, so just to give you uh, a quick background of the previous video, right? I talked about, you know, uh, dinos, uh, virtual machines and servers a little bit. So I, I don't I mean you could try reading up more, but my hunch and my understanding of how it's set up in on Heroku is, you have uh, you know you buy or you lease a number of dynos, uh, and they are and they could they are obviously not in the same VM. So if you uh, lease like uh, if you're paying for like ten dynos, they could theoretically be in ten different virtual machines, and all of them could be on a number of different servers, right? Now you have to deal with noisy uh, roommates and noisy neighbors. What I mean by that is, if your dyno is co-located with other dy, it is obviously co-located with other dynos. But if even if your the number of throughput the throughput of the number of requests going through your dyno for your product is is not a whole lot at a given window of time, the other dynos that uh, coexist and are co-located in this virtual machine uh, could be rather busy, right? And that would obviously have an impact in the performance of your dyno. And similarly, uh, all of these dynos live within the, uh, in the context of a VM. So, and that VM is going to live alongside other VMs and then there are servers. So to me, I, I treat VMs as like neighbors, noisy neighbors, and dynos as like noisy roommates, right? So even if you upgrade uh, your dynos or your Heroku, dynos to performance m which is the next level from where we are at uh, you you would be doing away with like uh, noisy roommates uh, but not so much with noisy neighbors as i understand because it's going to be uh, on a vm and that vm is going to be situated alongside with other vms uh, which could compete for the same uh, hardware resources as far as the cpu is concerned right but regardless it's still a, a big step up uh, we can't afford that right now 
uh, but but one day we will be able to, right? For now, or we might go to AWS uh, EC2 directly or something. Uh, but for now, we are on 2x, so we have to deal with the noisy roommates and noisy neighbors. It's just that uh, 2x dyno is a little bit bigger, so you have more memory uh, and uh, and compute units uh, to deal with. And as to how many compute units you get, uh, I think it's obviously not within your control. Heroku publishes that for 1x dynos you get 1 to 4, and for 2x I believe it's like 2 to 8 or something like that. Uh, and then they uh, cycle, they bounce the, the dynos at least once every day. So what you get tomorrow might be different from what you had today, for instance, right? So there's a lot of these things that go into your choices, but, uh, uh, and uh, of course, you know, your dynos are not, uh, let's say you have uh, uh, Heroku dynos and you're using a Mongo in the, in the cloud and, and messaging like we have. Uh, we also have to account for network uh, latencies. Uh, when I'm running it on my uh, in my dev machine, which is actually a very good machine, uh, everything is local, so I don't get to spot these latencies, even if my data is, is reasonably okay. Uh, it's not like I have very little dev data. I mean, obviously compared to production, it's, it's much lesser, but it's still, uh, I've been working on it for like a year now, so I don't really clean up or get rid, get rid of my local uh, database just just to keep it growing. Um, but I don't notice any latencies, right? Between my uh, UI to API to the database and messaging and all of these hops, even if there are more than, uh, there are many hops, it literally takes 20 milliseconds uh, for my pages to render. Uh, it, it's gonna be hard for me to get it to 20 on Heroku, at least with the servers, the setup we have, topology we have right now. Hopefully one day, uh, but as long as it's 200 or under, which is what I'm seeing right now, uh, you should uh, hopefully not be able to tell the difference, right? Uh, but when it gets to 20, I don't know, maybe there's, there's, it sounds like a tenfold difference between 20 and 200 milliseconds. So you might be able to tell if you're a picky user, but otherwise things are still fine, right? As long as it stays under the 300 millisecond limit, we should be, uh, we should be in good shape. And based on my testing in the last few days, that's where we are at. Uh, and uh, hopefully uh, Heroku continues to perform okay for us. Thank you.